Hello, everybody. It is great to be here one more time today. And my name is Gary Fowler, and I'm the CEO, president, and founder of GSD Get You Done Venture Studios, premier AI and quantum venture studio located in the heart of Silicon Valley. I'm a 17-time serial entrepreneur with several unicorns under the belt. I was on the original Digital management team Click Software, which was sold to Salesforce for $1.35 billion, and also EBIT.ai, an AI HR tech company that I co-founded with Dr. David Yang. We believe that intellectual capacity is evenly spread around the world, but opportunities are not. And with that, I got my incredible guest, G. Bruno. He comes way from the north up in Canada, folks, where it is really nice this time of year. So he's from Toronto. Right now he's down in Florida. And so I brought Steve on the show to talk a little bit about, about himself, about real estate, about artificial intelligence and what he sees in the real estate market with that. So how are you doing today, Steve? Can you hear me? You got a huge delay. Huh. That is weird. That is really weird. Okay. Can you hear me now? I'd, I'd say the legs probably... 15, 20 seconds. Okay. I hear you perfectly. <laughs> so, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> it's delayed, really delayed. <laughs> huh. I have no idea why that is. Uh, but I'm on, uh, who knows, I'm in Silicon Valley. You know, it slows down in Silicon Valley. Anyhow, tell us a little bit about Steve. Let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, your your background and how did you get involved? Well, we just lost Steve, so I'm here. Um, Steve will be back in a second. Sometimes, yes, we do have internet problems, but uh, he'll be back. Anyhow. So I'm back here in the heart of Silicon Valley. I'm looking at the mounds. And yes, everybody, it is very interesting this time of year in the valley. We've got some uh, green on the mounds where we haven't had before. We've got a really an uptick in activity. We see it around. And especially with things like chat GPT, generative AI models, and these incredible, incredible uh, companies that are moving forward like uh, open AI. So let's see if Steve's, can you hear me now, Steve? Nope. Huh. Can you hear me now? <laughs> okay. So, so Steve, tell us a little bit about your background. How did you get in real estate? No. Okay. So anyhow, as I was saying, the, the open AI, it's quite interesting because here we have this incredible new technology with these near human-like capabilities. So imagine when we're using things like these generative chatbots to be able to be the first line of impact dealing in customer service and not the traditional situation that we've seen before, but more like a human-like conversation. How are you today? How's the weather in your city? Um, let me check on that for you. You may like this better. In a real human-like way, we're going to see these chatbots really be first line of defense and first line of opportunities for a lot of companies around the world. So what you want to do is look at the, and they're going to evolve very, very, very quickly. And the capabilities that they're being able to garner in a very short period of time is quite interesting. In fact, if you get a chance next week, my book, called Artificial Imagination will be out. So you want to take a look at that. That'll be coming out on Amazon next week. Let's see if we can get to Steve now. Steve, can you hear us now? I can hear you perfect now. No delay. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So anyhow, <laughs> I had to fill some time talking about OpenAI, but that's okay. So tell us a little bit about it. So, you know, how what was your journey like as an entrepreneur? How did you get in real estate? And I know you're doing major, major real estate projects. Um, you know, like, all of them. I think like anything, um, you know, you, you start what I started anyways, was I started on site. So uh, we're in the land development and construction business, as you know, um, different real estate asset classes uh, all around North America. 
and, and the way that I got into the business, man, was I really started from the bottom, sweeping floors. Uh, then, you know, you got on a job site, you swept floors, and you kind of figured out what was next. The next step was, you know, I liked wood, so I thought I'd become a carpenter. Spent some time in carpentry. Really, really loved that. And then I came to a point in my life where I, I started getting into my, you know, mid-20s, and I thought, you know, I got to do something here. You know, I really like the construction business, but I'd like to put it together and use my mind as well. And so um, I thought if I could figure out a way to become a land developer, that would be my ultimate dream. And really at a high level, um, I really looked at a couple things. I said, number one, you know, time is the ultimate commodity. And number two, relationships are the currency of my life. So I really wanted to spend time with people I love doing stuff that I love. And so I thought, you know, if I could wake up every day, spend some time with my children, get some exercise and um, really be able to be in a position where I was adding value, shopping mm -hmm. for real estate, in other words, I, that, that's what I would love to do. And that's, that to me would not be that I ever had a job. So um, I, I pursued that dream and uh, here we are today, 14 years later. Now, do you feel like you're semi-retired or what? Because it sounds like you're having a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess, I, I guess you know what? I guess you'd have to define retirement, right? I, I would say I'm retired to most people's standards. I, I, I probably, my hours of operation during the day wouldn't say I'm retired, but um, the smile on my face kind of says it all. No, that's great. Well, you get to come down into Florida during the winter time. You get to enjoy beautiful parts of Canada during the summertime. You get to meet incredible people. So as you're going down through, what are the, some of the key characteristics, things that you've, you know, you've done a lot in a very short period of time. So as you've gone down through and done it, what's become really important for you to be able to be successful as a developer? So you started sweeping floors, you started being a carpenter, but what was, what set you apart from everybody else? Why are the guys still carpenters or why are the ladies still sweeping floors? Why is that? You know what, Gary, I did a lot of work on myself, read a lot of books, you know, got involved in the Tony Robbins environment at a really young age. Um, had some great, great mentors, asked a lot of questions and did a lot of listening. And um, as a result, you know, you kind of came up with the idea that, you know, maybe this is something I can do. In other words, it was um, honing my mind to realize that the limitations that I had put on myself were only in between here. Right. And when I finally realized, OK, that I'm, I'm in control of the show and I'm going to go out and add a lot of value, then everything just really started to open up. And how does it, you know, so what, what are the suggestions for people? How do you open up your mind? What did you do to open it up so that you, you move forward and you got away from being a carpenter and then being a developer? What's the difference between you and the other guy that's still doing the uh, carpentry that I'm sure you know? Well, you know what? I think the easiest, and if, if, you're, if you're not resourceful, you don't like to read. Um, I mean, and there's obviously some great literature and podcasts out there, but what I would say is, really listen to the way people describe how they feel. And, and the easiest way is to you know, walk down the street and you know, a two hour process and just say, hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? And what you're gonna hear on average is good, not bad, getting by, you know, whatever, these sort of middle range to lower range vibrational words. And ultimately, um, very rarely will you come across somebody that says, I'm excellent, I'm spectacular, I'm this. And I think if people can learn to make just those small adjustments, they wouldn't believe how profound it could be in their life. And why is that? So they make the profound adjustments and they say exceptional. What happens? Well, you open up those neural pathways, right? You start, you start to rebuild and start to focus on new things. And in other words, attract the opportunities that you so desire. But you've got to feel it. you got to think it here and you got to feel it here. And it's got to be here, right? And how does it work when you feel it? How do you know you have it? What's the feeling that's a, like? That's a great question. It's and I think you know it, but it's just you feel like you're in the pocket, you're in the zone, you're in the vibe. And, and I guess that is that and what you are focused on is in line with the way you're feeling. Right. And when you when that lines up, it's pretty obvious. Right. You just got to you don't have to pay that much attention. It feels pretty fantastic. And how do you stay in the zone? It's a good question. Um, I stay in the zone by um, taking a little bit of time to think all the time uh, and really ride that wave um, and try to be very cautious about. Um, what I'm doing with my time. That's, that's what I would really say. When you when people evaluate their time, it, you know, the question to me is like, oh, have you seen this show on Netflix and that show on Netflix? And like, it's great that you watch TV, but I don't watch TV, right? And I do other things that keep me in the zone. And the, I'd say the number one thing that keeps me in the zone is, um, is having incredible friends like you, you know, just, just being surrounded by people that we're talking the same language, 
and we're growing together and learning from each other and, and just continuing to grow as human beings together and see again how we can add value. Why do people not want to grow, Steve? You know, you, 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 people sometimes are afraid of growth, right? They're afraid of their potential. And you can't, like, lose sight of that. You can't lose that. I, I say, uh, like, keeping your knife sharp all the time. You know, you got to keep that sharp because if you're not, it's dull and it doesn't work. Well, how do you do that? Because that zone, staying in the zone, is really important. How do you keep yourself in the zone? Well, it's like the ritual for you. What keeps you there? Okay, that's a good question. So I, I really, this is my way of keeping it in the zone. I'm not saying it's the way. But what really works for me is to find great balance in my life. And how and how do I do that? Well, I, I have a very um, uh, nutritious diet, right? I drink a ton of water. I exercise every day. And I have a lot of ways and rules for things to go really well. For example, my standard to being happy is to wake up above ground, right? So I have really low standards for being happy and really high standards for all the other stuff that I want to do. But I think when I've just kept it simple like that, it's a, it really simplifies life. I mean, the contrast is an interesting thing. You can use it in a way to look at the guy that has more than you or that's doing more than you. or But then you can also say, like, how blessed am I to wake up above ground every single day? And just yeah, that's be able to- true, yeah. Right? Yeah. And- yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. You know, you you be happy with what you have. Sometimes people forget. They don't know. They never get enjoyment. You know, it's interesting when you see a number of uh, ultra high net worth individuals are not happy. And I said to yes. one of them, I said, why well, aren't you happy? And they can buy anything they want. And they said, because because I can buy anything I want. So why don't you try something else? You know, go out and try to like what? I said, well, why don't you Look into artificial intelligence. Why don't you get down through and understand that? Generative AI. Do you know what ChatGPT is? No. Why don't you check it out? It could be interesting. Go in and try to write a contract. Have you ever written your own contract? No. Go in and try it. See what it's like. Oh, this is unbelievable. This is the whole new world for me. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, it's amazing. And you got to go out and you got to explore things. You got to try things. You can't be afraid. You know, I remember when I was 14 years old, And uh, we had a martial artist, a Taekwondo instructor come into town who could not speak English. And he was real spooky because the guy had a ninth degree. uh, He's a grandmaster. So I went down and took lessons. That was the first class that he had. And I remember him running through the paces. And uh, he took me out in the river in October. And he started punching me in the stomach. He said, strong mind. He he knew strong mind. And I'm like, this is this is kooky, man. (laughs) This is like liability. time." anyhow, he's punching me in the river. Then he takes me back. And he takes me back uh, to the um, gym, the dojo, and he gives me two two inch cinder block caps. And he said, you need to break these. Like you can break them down. You know what I mean? It's not so hard down. But he said, you have to hold them and break them. That means you hold one up with one arm and break it. (laughs) And you can't move that arm or you move it and you hurt yourself bad. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, can I do this? And he said, he looked at me straight in the eyes and he said, in English, think of being on the other side. I never forget it. And I'm looking at this and this is a black belt test, right? I had never, ever even thought about breaking a cinder block cap. First of all, they're heavy to hold. So you had to be really, really, you know, grab it and hold. Then the thing is, you're going to punch through it with one hand, right? Wind up, one hand. Anyhow, I did it. And I looked at him and I said to him, I said, he said, it's strong mind, strong mind. And he said, life is strong mind. I never forgot that lesson. And I got two black belts, always wanted a black belt. I hung one up in the wall, got two of them, then became a judo champion and all this stuff. And I just, you can do anything you want if you believe in it. And the problem is most people don't. 99% of the people do not believe in themselves, right? They say they do. They try to truncate it with physical goods and all that, but it's not about goods. It's about you. Oh, it's not about somebody else. It's about I mean, your mind. I would say, like, we, like, we've willed them to happen. You know, it's almost like we've just willed them to happen. I mean, that we probably shouldn't have been in, this, in, in the deal or didn't have the capacity or whatever it was. And we just said, no, we're just, we had complete 100% focus and belief that we were going to do it against all odds. And we pull it off and someone's going like, and then we look back and we go, man, okay, like we, was, that was a little crazy, but the reality is, you know, you get a little bit of success and you had to celebrate the little wins. That, that was a big learning experience for me, right? As I was going through my career, because I had such high standards with things uh, with respect to my performance 
And then, you know, you're not celebrating the little wins and then you have the habit of not celebrating the little wins and you're breeding more of not celebrating as opposed yeah, to breeding right. the abundance, yeah. right? Well, and then you start to believe in the negative thoughts too. You start to, you got to be careful what you ask for. Seriously, you got to be ready to accept it because when it comes, the universe presents it to you. If you're not ready to accept it, nothing good happens because the universe doesn't like that. And it doesn't want to present those to you the next time. It oh, actually yeah. will put them right in your lap. And if you feel it and you accept it, that's one thing. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's the uh, keeping your knife sharp all the time. And be careful what you ask for because you're going to get it. I remember one time, like, real story. This guy had a Lamborghini. And I, th I maybe I told you this. And uh, I was in a, um, did I tell you the story? The guy had yeah. a Lamborghini. Yeah. And right. it's, just, it's unbelievable. I mean, the thing is, it's like, how can this be? Like, I, it's just what I thought about. And it happened to me, you know, it happened to me numerous different times from meeting celebrities like Schwarzenegger, you know, having dinner with him and, and uh, jacking around with him. I mean, it's just, it's, it's happened so many times. It's unbelievable. And so you know that it's not just by happen chance that you're actually willing it into existence. Yes. And it just happened, you know, and you got to be careful. You don't want to tell people what happened because they won't believe you and it'll, it'll ruin your knife. So yeah, I had, well, a, had it happen to me yesterday with another deal, right? It just happened. It was like, oh my God, I can't believe. Like, really? Like, I have to really be careful what I want because I did it and I didn't intentionally do it and it happened. And I'm like, oh my God, rejoice, you know, one more right. time. But that's yeah. it. And then how do you go down through? So, you know, you 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 have nutritious food, you have uh, drink a lot of water, you work out. So what what you know, so you went down through Tony Robbins stuff, you went down through the fire walking, probably, right? Where you walk yeah. over the hot bowls. What how was that? Did you have to believe to do it? How did you get over to how did you do it? Well, it's, you know what? It's almost peer pressure, right? Like everybody's walking over the thing. You're over there and it's like, well, you know what? It's not going to be that bad. How bad can it be? I tend to have an adventurous side. So, uh, you know, whatever that may be, climbing, jumping, riding, whatever it is. So uh, that wasn't too bad um, for, for me. Was, but, were uh, the poles hot? Yeah, but not really when you're walking on, right? <laughs> All right man, that good. sounds great. Yeah, no, well, I mean, a lot of it's your mind, right? You will it into existence that it's hot and then you don't want to do it. But life's about overcoming it, right? And believing that you can do it. And so what? how different were you from the time you started walking on the coals to the time you came off the coals? What changed in you? Uh, you know what? I probably, I got in really, you got to understand, like, so I had, I had an uncle who was just a great mentor and he, he was getting divorced when he was in his 40s. And he said to me, look, listen, you got you to check out all these power talk things. You had these CDs from Tony Robbins. I'm 13 years old. I'm like, you know what? He's the only wealthy guy that I know. So, you know, I'm going to listen to whatever he says type of thing. Right. And, uh, and so, so I started listening to these things and I like, I, my buddies thought I was crazy, right? I'm walking around. How are you doing? Fantastic. You blah, blah, blah. right? And back in the day that, that was all NLP, the neuro linguistic programming stuff. And, um, we were having a lot of fun. Um, so I, I've, I've been lucky enough to be in the environment at a really young age and was able to have some friends that contributed on the same program. So, uh, you know, to answer your question about the firewalk, it was nothing surprising, but that based on the amount of time that I'd already spent living with a big smile on my face. So what's happening when, you know, you do a lot of real estate development. How do you understand where to, where to do the development? What happens? What's that process like? I think there's, there's two components that I look at, you know, there's uh, number one, a macro, a macro component, you know, what's going on in the economy globally, right? How is that affecting, you know, what's going on and who the buyers and the demographic could be. And then there's a micro, right? Because different asset classes uh, are affected by in a positive or negative way by economies. And so depending on what asset class we're focused on, we really look at the macro and the micro. And then we do a very, very deep dive due diligence. And I mean, very deep. We're boots on the ground type of company um, to really understand who we're dealing with, how we're dealing with it, why we are, where our risk is, and then ultimately, you know, our downside protection, right? Um, we're very conservative in our approach on, on investments. We don't need to do every deal, but we want to do the right deals and uh, we want to do them with the right people. And so when we go into a community, it's, it's really important to see, you know, where can we add value in this community and with whom? Who do you, how do you know what the right person is? How do you know what characteristics does the right person have? Yeah, you know what? I, it's, a, it's a great question. Um, I think for me, it's always a vibe, right? When, whether you're meeting with a counselor or a person is, you know, what, what is that vibe? And, and really, I, my, again, again, my goal is always to just add value. So I'm going in there with an open heart, trying to add value to these people's lives and solve a problem, 
right? The problem could be we need workforce housing. The problem could be there's a foreclosure on the hotel. It doesn't really matter, but the goal is to help solve that problem. And we like to be in communities with people that like to be a part of solving those problems from a business perspective, right? And, and you know when you're in those communities because you walk right in, the door is wide open. And they're saying, hey, we have this problem. How can we work together to try and solve it? You need to do some stuff and we need to do some stuff and together, you know, if we can make it work, let's do that. And so they're really partnerships with the communities that we're in. So when you're down there in these partnerships, you know, I know we talked about it and you said when you're going into a deal and you find a farmer, for instance, you cut them in on the deal to be able, so everybody wins. What does that do? How does that change the dynamics of the relationship? Oh, I mean, I think in the beginning, you know, at the beginning, it's, uh, it's pretty funny to watch because they think there's a catch to it. Right. And what there is no catch. Right. I mean, it's the reality is think about, I just looked at, it, I said, if I bring them in on the deal, there's less friction, everybody wins. They continue to get a win for their family. And then, and you know, what happens after, you know, this, this compounds over time is you've got a bunch of really, really wealthy farmers that have been a part of your projects. And then as we, we, we raise capital on our deals. So then these farmers become an investment source. They already trust us. We've already done deals together. And now they're sitting in behind the banks providing equity or whatever it is, uh, any type of structure into our deals. So, I mean, it's like it's win-win and it's a relationship that wins for a long time for everybody. That's great. So it's a lot of relationship building. So is that how you get your investments? Do you look for relationships? Where do yeah, you look for investments? You know what? I don't have to look too far. Um, we've been so blessed that when you get a few good guys and then they start telling their friends and they start telling their friends and usually like-minded people hang out with, you know, the old saying, birds of the same feather flock together, right? You get, um, you really get some like-minded people that are, again, trying to add value. How can I help you? How can you help me, et cetera. And um, the main thing is the relationship because, you know, in, in all markets, if you're in a project long enough, there's going to be some tough times. And the question is what's going to happen in those tough times and how are you going to navigate them? And when you've got people that are very focused on the solution, um, and you have very conservative underwriting, usually it works out pretty well. No, that's great. And, you know, the um, focus on the solution is another key, right? I remember I went out with uh, Patch Adams, a doctor, and uh, I remember he told me, you know, he had this thing where he said, um, how many fingers do I have? And he puts up, you know, his fingers and he said, look at me, not the problem. And when you do that, you actually, there's a, there's an effect, a perception effect where actually your fingers double, right? So you have eight. And I, I literally went with them. I saw the movie. I told you this too. I saw the movie and then there's patch. And I remember always look for the solution and not the problem. Most people focus on the problem. They never get over. It's like a boat anchor, right? It holds you back. Look for yes. the solution, go out and get shit done. Figure yeah. it out. Don't, you know, uh, don't think about the negative. Think about the positive. How can this have a positive impact? Bring some rejoice in what you're doing. Make yourself all, happy. The, all the boys talk about it, right? Like if you believe that things happen for you and not to you, then it just changes the game, right? Because it's it's having that a little be a little bit perceptive, maybe in the way that things come, and just say, what can I learn from this? Why is this happening to me? What can I learn from it? And how can it, how is it happening for me, not to me? And I've always found like Ed Milet talks about that a lot. So does Tony. I mean, all all, all the guys talk about it, right? But it's the truth. It is it is the truth. Well, absolutely. I mean, Jim Carrey, right? When he wrote his $10 million check, he said he wrote a check for $10 million and kept it. Right. And then all of a sudden he, he, he was able to cash a check, right? He did a check and it's like unbelievable, but that's the way it is. You're right about it. You can will it into existence. And then, you know, the other thing is you got to keep yourself open. One thing you said, Steve, it's really interesting. You got to look at different kinds of experiences. Don't be afraid. I had a friend of mine, Scott McNeely, who was one of the founders of some microsystem actually i met him for lunch and this guy created a multi-billion dollar company and he said to me you know look for areas where it's the hardest for you that you fear the most because you're going to learn the most and he said don't be afraid and and i said you know and, and i tested that too that works right go to places where other people are afraid to go and you can change things you can actually dynamically shift and guess what there's not a lot of competition in there either because no, they don't come just like a generative AI back in 2020 when I wrote my article, July 21st, 2020, people said, this isn't ever going to happen. This is pie in the sky. Why would anybody be talking about artificial intelligence in this way? And I said, because it's going to happen. And guess what? It's happening. Now people are reacting. Now think about the next level, what, what's going to happen. Our lives are fundamentally changing. 
I don't know about you too. The other thing is I think about kindness, right? Being kind to people. One thing I've learned is that, you know, extend out and, and be kind to people. If you see somebody that needs some help, go out and try to help them. Whatever that is, you know, whatever that help constitutes. And it and it makes you feel better, your endorphins and encephalons, but more importantly, you know, you're making your little dent in the universe. I mean, how do you feel about that? Uh, I feel like I just I had this young guy that I, I met his father and he said, you know, kind of like my son's 25. He's at this point in his life. You know, could you talk to him a little bit? I said, yeah, sure. I don't, you know, I don't know what I'm going to talk to him about, but we'll guess we'll get there. And so we, uh, he comes over and I said, look, I try to see how, you know, how can I get through to this young guy? Because I was there. Right. And I said, all right, man. I said, listen, I, I'm not going to tell you anything. I said, I'm just going to show you. I'm like, let's go out. I'm going to take you out for like three, four hours. I said, There's no agenda. We might go to a bar. We might go to a restaurant. I don't know what we're going to do. I said, but I'm going to, I'm going to teach you little life lessons along the way. And I was teaching them about appreciation and contribution and, and just being able to add value to other people's lives for no apparent reason. And uh, we, um, we met with um, younger people. We met with people in their seventies and eighties and people that he normally wouldn't have talked to. So I said, yeah, you would go talk to this group of people because they're in your zone. Watch how much you can learn from this group of people. And we would shift over and talk with them for a little bit. And then on the way home, um, I was running a little tight on schedule. And I, uh, I said, look, man, I said, have you ever hitchhiked? And he's like, no. And I'm like, okay, we're going to hitchhike home. I'm going to show you that people are actually fundamentally great people. And so I said, watch, you count 15 cars and we'll be picked up. So we, I said, but you got you to gotta have a big smile on your face. The thumb's got to be out, right? He's a pretty good looking kid. So I put him at the front. <laughs> I said, uh, you know, so, you know, sure enough, 15, 16, 17. I'm like, all right, we might, gotta, we might have to call an Uber here, but we'll just keep it going. And uh, sure enough, yeah, some, uh, some young lady picked us up and drove us back. And, uh, and he was just good. He was unbelievable. He goes, I can't believe that day just happened. And I said, yeah, man. And he sent me a nice text, you know, about a week later and just said, man, I learned so much from you. Thank you, blah, blah, blah. The point of the story is he, he, the, the number one thing he took was just being able to add value to other people's lives, make sure he's looking after himself so that he can give more of the universe and the people around him. That's yeah, you're right about it. I mean, that's it, right? Open up and try things you would never try, right? And go out. By the way, if you have that curiosity as a kid, I don't know about you, but I keep that curiosity as a kid, and it keeps you young. It makes you feel young. It makes people. And then there's a law of attraction. People want to be around you because they can feel sure. it. They can feel the energy. It's amazing. And listen, wow, it's unbelievable. We are actually at the top of the show, and um, we'll have to do another one because this is a lot of fun. <laughs> So tell me a little bit, and actually we should do like a motivational one we'll have a special one set up we'll go out and broadcast around the world we'll, we'll uh, jazz them up talking about attraction uh so so closing thoughts and advice that would have for somebody like yourself starting out one more time whether it be a startup or a company uh wherever they're located um just uh, several pointers that that you would give them and then how can people get a hold of you yeah so uh Pointer that I actually would give them is you, you, you're probably nervous to pick up the phone. If you do enough research on somebody, you can add enough value. You can pick up the phone and talk to a Gary Fowler and he'll pick up the phone. They'll call you back surprisingly, right? You might not, you might not get a call back from his VP, but you'll get a call back from the CEO that's working eight o'clock at night when he's there. And I can tell you a number of stories where this has happened and, and changed people's lives. And um, so I would say, you know, don't, don't be afraid to reach out to people. You'd be surprised who calls you back and then um, do some work on yourself. Look at your time. Right. If time if time is the ultimate commodity and we, and we believe that, which I do and relationships are the currency, you know, what are you doing with your time and who are you spending it with? What are you talking about? Is it moving you forward or not? Is it getting you closer to your goals or further away from your goals? And I think mm -hmm. uh, the third point would be life can be very simple if you choose it to be so. And that and what you believe in your life is true for you. And so. It could be as easy as being happy to wake up above ground if you choose to be in a state of appreciation for having all your fingers, your toes, your mind, whatever, whatever it is that you have. And um, mm -hmm. how people can get a hold of me? Well, I'm not, I'm not on overly a lot of social media or anything. I think the only thing I've got up there is LinkedIn. So I'd say that's the easiest way to get a hold of me. But, um, but that would be uh, the best. That's great. You know, Steve, thanks for taking out of time out of your busy schedule. It's really appreciate. I enjoy it. Every time I talk to you, I enjoy the conversations. And to my audience out there, thank you so much for joining one more time. GSD presents Silicon Valley AI and Tech, and I'm your host, Gary Fowler. We'll be back for another exciting edition on Thursday. Stay happy, stay safe, and stay healthy. Back at you again. Thanks, Steve, and thanks, everybody, for taking your time. Bye-bye.